So the other scenario with improper integrals is that there's an infinite discontinuity or a vertical asymptote somewhere within the bounds of integration. And this is handled similarly to how we dealt with infinite bounds, but instead of replacing the infinity, we replace the x coordinate that has the vertical asymptote with a variable and do a limit approaching that. So if I'm looking at the integral from zero to one of one over the square root of x, this looks like it's a perfectly fine integral to deal with, but the ver there's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So that means as I'm looking at the graph of this, there's a ver there's my rectangles have ver infinite heights as I'm approaching zero from the right hand side. So what we do is we say, well, because there's a vertical asymptote, my function is discontinuous at zero. I'm going to replace the zero with a variable and then do the limit as, that, as I'm approaching that zero. But now, unlike infinity, I do need to be careful of which side am I approaching it from. So if I'm looking at the number line, here's zero, here's one, I want to approach from the right hand side. So I'm approaching zero from the right. Again, focus on the integral first, then worry about the limit. So I have the limit as a is approaching zero from the right. One over x, to, one over the square root of x is x to the negative one half. Antiderivative of that would be two times the square root of x. And that's from a to one. Again, I'm still working on evaluating my, my integral. I haven't started my limit yet. So plug in my upper bound, plug in my lower bound. Now I can evaluate my limit. I'm going to try substitution first. So if I stick zero in for a, I get that this converges to two. So even though there was a vertical asymptote, sometimes we're going to be able to evaluate this, which is what happened in this case here. If we look to see what happens if my vertical asymptote is at the upper bound, similar approach. So here, at first glance, it seems like nothing's wrong with it, but actually what happens is I do have a vertical asymptote at x equals two. So I, this, I'm not actually able to evaluate this integral directly like this. I'm gonna have to change it into a limit of an integral. So I'm gonna replace the two with a variable and then do the limit as that v is approaching 2 from the left-hand side, since it does make a difference whether I'm approaching a vertical asymptote from the left or the right. So again, I focus on evaluate the integral first and then worry about the limit. So I have 1 over x minus 2, which would be the natural log. I do need my absolute value for the around the x minus 2 part because I'm dealing with numbers between one and two here, which would make the inside negative. So I have to force the inside to be positive. Plug in my upper bound. So, and then plug in my lower bound. Now I can worry about evaluating my limit. Well, the natural log of one is zero. If I try to do substitution, I get something where, remember, I'm approaching 2 from the left. So I'm having like plugging in like 1.9, 1.99, 1.999. And when I plug those in, I'm getting the natural log of 0.1, the natural log of 0 0.01, the natural log of 0 0.001. And if I think about the natural log graph, as I get closer to 0 from this side, I'm approaching negative infinity. And so negative infinity minus zero, this is infinite. So this is diverging because we're approaching negative infinity. Finally, 
the most annoying case, what if our vertical asymptote is somewhere in the middle of our bounds of integration? So here, there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. In that case, I need to split this up into two integrals. And I'm going to rewrite this just to save myself a little bit of effort because that's a negative exponent. So using my additivity pro property, I am splitting this up. But now, because the vertical asymptote is at 1, I have to replace the 1s with variables and do limits as I approach that. So if I'm going from 0 to 1, I'm approaching 1 from the left. And from 1 to 3, oops, I'm approaching 1 from the right. Because again, it does make a difference what side we are approaching a vertical asymptote from. So we have to make sure we're aware of it's from the, if it's from the left or the right. So first I work on evaluating my integrals. And don't touch my limits until I'm done evaluating my integrals. So antiderivative of x minus 1 to the negative 2 thirds would be 3 times x minus 1 to the 1 third. That would be from 0, that's a b for my upper bound. Fortunately, the exact same antiderivative for my other integral. But it's from a to 3. Plug in my bounds and do my subtraction. So 3 times b minus 1 to the 1 third. And then plugging in a 0 gives me a negative 3. And on my other integral, I already said I'm going to get a negative 3. Whoops. Oops. Not when I plug in. So when I plug 3 in, I actually get 3 times 2 to the 1 third minus 3 times a minus 1 to the 1 third. So if b is approaching 1 from the left, that's becoming 0. So that approaches 0. That's a plus 3. This is a 3 times 2 to the 1 third. And if a is approaching 1, this all approaches 0. And so I get 3 plus 3 times 2 to the 1 third is what this integral is converging towards.